Hi there, hope you're well guys. So this week's podcast will be a book review. And the book is Hayy ibn Yaqdhan, Alive, Son of Awake. That's already a kind of strange thing to call a book. It sounds uh, as odd in Arabic as it does in English. Um, so Alive, Son of Awake is an Arabic philosophical novel and an allegorical tale written by Ibn Tufayl in the early um, 12th century. And this little Arabic book has been translated into Latin under this title, The Self-Taught Philosopher, and into English as well under different titles, The uh, Improvement of a Human Reason and The Journey of the Soul, and others. And there are some other translations into European languages. And the book then really uh, becomes a kind of uh, 17th, 18th uh, century literary sensation. Everybody is reading A Life in the Awake. Um, interestingly, it's almost certainly this book was the inspiration for Daniel Defoe's novel, uh, Robinson Crusoe, uh, famously the first novel in the English language. So, Ibn Tufayl, the writer, is talking about in the form of this parable, and uh, it's a kind of Sufi story insofar as it seeks to talk about something that's theosophically really important. Mm, maybe you wonder right now, what theosophy means. Well, according to Merriam-Webster dictionary, uh, it's the teaching about God and the world based on uh, mystical insight. So, as we were saying that the writer is talking about uh, in this book uh, something that's theosophically really uh, important by using a quite simple story. The story of the castaway. A life son of awake is supposedly a baby abandoned as a castaway on a desert island on the coast of India. And the child becomes a kind of feral child, uh, I suppose we might say. And he's adopted by a doe, a female deer, who feeds him. And he's able to grow to childhood and then the female deer dies. And during the course of a live son of awakes, completely unlettered childhood, he uh, looks around. There is no distraction, nothing except virgin nature and himself and the wide heavens above. And Ibn Tufayl, the writer, is using this a kind of uh, thought experiment to indicate what are we capable of in a state of complete seclusion if we've never seen another human being but simply surrounded by uh, fitrah, innate nature by the glories of virgin nature so looking at the way in which everything in his island has a cause and realizing that there cannot be an endless succession of physical causes but there must be something that is set that cause so he concludes that must be a cause of causes which cannot be physical and therefore he arrives at the idea of the creator similarly the existence of the spirit which he finds uh, by looking inside himself and by considering what happens on the, uh, on, the, on the tragic day when uh, his kind of animal stepmother, the door uh, dies. And uh, uh, there she is, but she's not there. And also looking at the order of the world, the balance of the world, uh, the beauty of the world, and concluding that one needs to have a spiritual life and devote oneself in adoration to the source of that life. So in his absolute solitude, a life son of awake on his desert island addresses himself to the Lord of heaven and he devises for himself certain rituals 
And this is particularly uh, interesting, this uh, realization that we have uh, the surging up of a yearning for our origin and our place of return and uh, our creator, which is what the heart starts to feel when it's uh, just no longer distracted by the draws of uh, worldly uh, life. So a life sort of awake looks at the stars of the sky and the heavenly bodies and sees the purity. Uh, it's impossible to imagine the moon being uh, contaminated and therefore those higher things being clean suggest that in order to become higher we human beings also need to uh, clean ourselves well another lesson that he learned in his seclusion which is really the lesson of compassion if we recognize God's beauty in everything in the world which is something that is enabled by the stillness which seclusion gives us and you see the mercy of the compassionate God you yourself wish to become a, a beautiful person therefore a compassionate person you can't just sit idly by while others are suffering that's not part of uh, perfection it's not one of the consequences uh, the fruits of worship then the story changes somebody else arrived to this island um, somebody called Absal and he's from another island uh, and Absal tells a life of his own island and uh, how the people have fallen away from a state of harmonious dealing with their creator and with the creation and uh, were in a state of a pro anxiety materialism desire for status and things then alive uh, goes with Absal to his island to try and preach to these miscreants uh, this kind of rather modern sounding people and it doesn't go well um, because they can't hear it uh, they can't hear it they haven't had that inward state of limpid tranquility that it enables them to see that well uh, this makes sense uh, a lot of sense and of course would love to worship of course there's a source a uh, one source behind everything that busy with the stuff and status so he returns with Absal alive returns with um, uh, Absal and they spend the rest of the days according to the story in a state of worship and single-hearted dedication to the divine so what is the main uh, takeaway of this story uh, what do you think well uh, for me firstly uh, the importance of nature really uh, in our lives by uh, contemplated upon nature alive realized the existence of the creator and uh, there is another dimension to uh, contemplating upon nature and observing it that uh, it's a start point uh, really I believe to become uh, a better person more compassionate more generous person and uh, there is abundance uh, depends on you how much you can get and uh, nature gives us a daily free reminder uh, of, uh, well, lots of lessons actually. You just need to observe and believe me, you'll get lots of free magnificent stuff. I myself very much admire the stillness and calmness of the tree. Uh, it's a very powerful reminder to me uh, to be still and calm in the chaos. The sense of companionship, especially when I look at the spaciousness of the sky, so it's much more than merely lessons what nature offers us. We can add to that the sense of uh, the sense of companionship. So no surprise when people like Henry David Thoreau go to the wilderness and spend years there, actually two years, two months, and two days, uh, to be precise. And speaking of uh, Henry David Thoreau, um, please go and read or listen 
to his book Walden. It's absolutely lovely uh, book and you will get the chance to look at nature from his view. It's much more than that, but uh, this is one of the uh, benefits that you will get. Uh, I'll put the link to his audiobook in the description box. Okay, now what else uh, can we get from this story? I think one of the things that this story encourages us to do is to take the journey, an inner journey uh, inside ourselves and to look carefully into our beliefs and why we believe so because really a lot of us um, most I believe the kind of beliefs that we have are inherited beliefs from family uh, or we gain them from friends uh, society and the media has its big impact on us as well makes us believe things that's not true uh, well how do you know maybe uh, you ask uh, maybe they're true, maybe these beliefs are good, and maybe they're wrong, you know? How do you know? So we need to take this journey from time to time, we need it, so we can be aware of our beliefs and know from where they came. And this, uh, this journey, it's not just about big philosophical matters, it could be pretty much about any questions you have. And here's a kind of um, uh, rule, simple rule, uh, it could help you as a start point. If anything uh, triggered one of your beliefs, contradic contradicted with one of your beliefs, rather than ignore it, you could think, ask, inquire, and live with it uh, sometimes. Take this journey that we talked about then decide uh, what's your uh, take on that. Don't rush. Take your time and enjoy the journey. Now I'd like to end with a quote, two quotes actually. One from Isaac Asimov, he's an American writer. Uh, he said, your assumptions are your windows to the world. Scrub them, out, scrub them off uh, every once in a while or the light uh, won't come in. The second is from Al Hassan ibn al Haytham, an Arabic scholar. This is a, a translation of what he uh, said. If learning the truth is the seeker's goal, then he must make himself the enemy of all that he reads. Hope you enjoyed this review. Take care of yourselves. Bye.